A lot of people get on board with the idea that net positive is, is a great aspiration, uh, but maybe see it as a kind of daunting challenge, maybe bordering on the impossible. Um, what's kind of the central message for them for kind of how to get there, how to get beyond seeing this as the aspiration to, to getting it done? Andrew, you want to pick it up? Yeah, sure. I mean, look, I think as, as Paul said, it's clear that we're not moving fast enough, right? And we have to address these challenges. I think it can seem daunting to say we'll take responsibility for our extended impacts for a social media company to take responsibility for democracy or a consumer products company to take responsibility for consumption levels in the world or reliance on fossil fuels and packaging. But the core message really, or the, the way the book builds is to partnership, as Paul talked about. So we're not saying anybody has to do this alone because there is no entity big enough to tackle these things alone. Um, we talk in the book about palm oil and, and all the partnerships and work to try to reduce deforestation that failed for many years and have started to work more recently. And you know, Unilever is one of the biggest buyer, the biggest buyer of palm oil in the world, but only buys 3%. Right? So they can't make these decisions alone and you need the whole sector. And Paul's work with Imagine it kind of has shown, and, and there's a lot of data behind this, that if you want to really pivot an entire system, you probably need 20, 25% of the players. You know, it's not as much as you think, but if you have enough in the room and you bring them together and you have partnerships with civil society and government, I think you start to address systemic issues. So you're working at a much bigger level, right? And so you can ask bigger questions about the goals you're trying to achieve. So I, I think the message, you know, really is that there's urgency, we need speed and scale, but that this is possible, that we can show you how to build the kind of company that thrives by solving these problems. And it's possible by embracing um, a much more open and transparent and kind of humble view of the world that invites in partnerships, that invites in even, you know, NGOs that are critical, that can provide some of the solutions that you need. That's, I think, the big mindset change right, that we are not, it really changes the dynamic on thinking about competitive advantage as your sole practice or short-term shareholder value. And you're thinking in a much larger way about the value you create as a business and value you create with these partners in your value chain, your peers, um, and all the stakeholders that matter, and, and including your employees, which I think are really the biggest driver of change right now. You know, so if there's students on here, MBA students, like, the force that, that they are on business is, I think, really profound and perhaps the most powerful. And you saw that in, in Glasgow, right? You got Greta Thunberg and others sitting outside chanting, and it actually applies real pressure that holds people accountable. Um, and I think that can be inspiring as well, that we're, you're not going to be alone and there's going to be people watching, making sure. And, and those people want to help. They want to make sure you get there. Yeah. Oh, what is, and, kind of, go, go ahead. Sorry. No, I just wanted to add one sentence on it. The book really talks about the leadership transformation that is needed for corporate transformation that then ultimately leads with systems transformation. But it starts with ourselves. And that leadership transformation is probably the most important missing element and why we have such a shortage of leaders. You are creating 90,000 leaders at the Rossman School. You've just joined Prime. You're climbing up the rankings. That's why we're talking to you. We want to create this enormous movement. But where is that leadership shortage coming from? Frankly, what we've shown in COVID as well once more is it comes from a lack of listening, listening to all your stakeholders, your customers, your suppliers, your communities, but even future generations and the planet. And that is what we start with, a chapter that do you really care? And it's that unlocking that then, and then we go into purpose. Why is that so important? And what does your inner core, you know, you cannot be a sustainable company if you're not sustainable yourself, as you know, Ken, or a, a purposeful driven company if you're not purposeful yourself. And it's that combination of awareness by listening and that higher inner core or purpose that drives you, that gives you this courage to do the right things, to move things forward. Too many CEOs play not to lose versus playing to win. They give targets that they know they can achieve, but they know also it's not enough. They're fearful, as Andrew says, to work in these broader partnerships because they're not only in charge. So how can you get that level of leadership, that level of courage up? And what we saw during COVID is that companies where their leaders were actually showing this higher level of uh, empathy, compassion, humanity, humility, stronger purpose driven, if you want to, thinking partnerships, multi-generational, these leaders, and as a result, their companies, not surprisingly, excelled. 